Thanks for tuning in to this episode of QRP to QRO, video number five, how to tune the bandpass filters in an Allocraft K2 with the use of a tracking generator and a spectrum analyzer. The two bands that I'm going to talk about in this video are 80 and 160 meters. However, the same concept can be applied to all bands within the radio. Don't forget the most important thing for this process, copy. Life would be awfully boring without schematics and diagrams, so that's what we'll take a look at here and describe some of the theory of operation as well as the circuit. Before we get into it too far, I will point out that there are other methods for tuning these filters listed in the manual. So the general theory is just to peak the signal, which is essentially what we're going to do here in just a second with the tracking generator. But uh, if you read through the manual, this is 78 and 79, with the uh, 40 meter transmitter alignment and the receiver pre-alignment. The general theory with all the different filter sections is you set the capacitors to their midpoints and then you go and adjust the inductors to tune in the second band. So moving along, as you get into the circuit description in the back here, you can read through this a little bit more in detail if you have the manual and have this particular radio, but um, each one of the filters is set by a series of pi networks. And if you think about a pi network, it's the combination of an inductor and a capacitor, and both of those together have a resonant frequency. And by tuning them, uh, that's exactly what we're doing, is trying to peak the resonance at a particular frequency. So that's in very simple terms, that's uh, that's all we're up to do. And the filter that we're going to look at, again, this is the filter section in the schematic. Filters that we're going to look into in more depth are the 80 and 160 meter. And the process is pretty much the same for all of the sections here, all the different filters. The only thing that is a little bit different with the 80 and 160 is instead of using tuned capacitors, it has fixed value. So if you look down here on the 10 and 12 meter section, there's your tuned capacitors. You go up to 15 and 17, it's got the tuned capacitors. 20 and 30, same deal. Then you go up to 40 meters, 40 and 160, or I'm sorry, uh, 40 and 60. Uh, it just has the fixed value capacitors as well. All of these band sections are switched with latching relays. Again, you can check that in the circuit description. It talks about that. But each one of those latching relays is what directs the signal through the filter section. So with that having been said, let's look at signal injection and signal recovery. So if you look at the circuit, everything ties back in through this W6, the transverter bypass, which my radio does not have the transverter interface so this W6 uh, bypass jumper uh, is in place in my radio. So that's one of the points that we need to take into consideration. The other one, if you follow this to the other side of the, of the bandpass filter section, it refers us back to sheet number two. So we'll go to sheet number two. And here we find our bandpass filter input from sheet number three. And if you look at this, you've got two diodes and a resistor that are part of that particular section of the schematic. So you've got D6 and D7, and the cathode of D7 or the cathode of D6, whichever you prefer, uh, it should be the easy spots to tap. You could also go to uh, the circuit side of R5, not the ground side, the circuit side. So let's take a look at that inside the radio and see what it looks like. So let's go ahead and open up the radio here. And if you recall from the schematic just a second ago, let me get my pointer here. W6, that jumper is one of the points that we're going to tap. We follow this to the other sheet, sheet number two. I'm going to use the cathode of D7 
you could use the cathode at E6 or the circuit side of R5 also if you want. They all tie into the same portion. So we look in the back of the radio as viewed from the front to the back. We find our W6 jumper back here. And if we look at the front of the bandpass filter section, we find D7. And again, from viewed, looking at the front of the radio to the back, the left side of D7 is our cathode. So we'll go ahead and tap both of those points. I'm just using basic 10x probes from an oscilloscope, and they are on the 1x setting. So we'll go ahead and tap W6 in the back. We'll ground it. And we'll take our other probe. Again, 10x probe set to 1x. We'll attach this to the cathode of D7. And we'll hit the ground jumper that's right next to it with the ground lead of the, uh, of the probe. So if I get that wire out of the way. Also, a quick mention in here too, the two inductors for the 80 and 160 meter sections are L3 and L4. Those are the two that I'm going to be tuning. If we look at the back of the radio here, we find our L3 and L4. And even though on this board it only shows that those pertain to 80 meters, uh, the 160 meter band is an option that adds in capacitors. So this section in reality does affect both bands. You'll see that here in a second. The tool I'm using for this process is the compensation screwdriver that comes with an oscilloscope probe. If you're not familiar with that process, there is an adjustment screw on oscilloscope probes to tune for excess capacitance. The tool's not absolutely perfect for this particular job as there is a little bit of metal in the tip of it. But as you'll see here in a minute, it's not going to make that huge of a difference for us. Just a quick walk through of the tracking generator and spectrum analyzer setup. Again, this is 160 meters that we're tuning, so we have the center frequency set to 1.9 megahertz. Again, 160 meters being 1.8 to 2 megahertz. I have the span set to 1 megahertz, which is the width from edge to edge on the screen. So with the band being only 200 kilohertz wide, it'll fit very easily within the view that we have on the screen. So we'll move on to the signal generator. I've got that set to track and we'll go ahead and turn it on here. Then we'll see our signal coming up. The signal level that I'm using at the moment is minus 10 dBm. Then we'll go to the marker. And it's showing the position at five, which you have 10 radicals across the width of the screen, so 5 is right in the middle. And you'll see that up here. So we have 1.9 megahertz. And the point of this filter that I want to peak is down at 1815. So we'll go ahead and roll this back a little bit. And you'll see that frequency adjust accordingly. We're not going to get it right at 1815, but pretty close anyway. And you'll see where the bottom peak of the filter is right now is actually at 1815. But just for the sake of discussion in the video, I'm going to adjust L3. This is one of the tuned capacitors, or I'm sorry, tuned inductors. If I turn that clockwise, you'll see both the shape and the intensity uh, change. So the idea is to get this bottom peak to, in my case, right at 1815. You can set that to whichever frequency you like. But being that the CW portion is down on the bottom, 1815 suits just fine. And if we scroll this down to the bottom of the band at 1800, you'll see that it really doesn't change a whole lot. It's still within that, uh, uh, that lower peak of the filter shape. We'll go ahead and Scroll that up to about 1850. 
just for example also and we're still around that peak we're not right at the top of it but we're just slightly off of it one other note also is as we saw in the schematic L3 and L4 pertain to both the 160 meter filter as well as the 80 meter band filter so to illustrate that here we'll go ahead and set the radio to 80 meters and we'll change our frequency on the monitor over to the center of 80 at uh, 3750. So now we'll see our filter response at 80. And we'll go ahead and bring up the marker. And again, the fifth division is right in the middle of the screen. So we'll go ahead and roll this back and we'll put our bottom frequency at uh, 3500 at the bottom of the band here. And there we go, we're at 3500. And then you can see the marker flashing right here. Which if you look at the overall shape and intensity of the filter, it's actually not at the peak on the left side. But that's not overall that important because again, if we go back to 160 meters, let me switch my frequency here at 1.9 and we'll change the filter on the radio back to 160. The point that we're concerned with on this band is 1815. So if we go trying to tune this 160 meter filter anywhere else on the band, other than the ideal frequency in my case that I want to keep it to, we're going to adjust both 160 and 80. And one last quick look at 80 meters, just for sake of discussion. Again, L3 and L4 affect both 80 and 160. And in this case, I have our left marker, the main one, I set that to the bottom of the band at 3500. And I set the delta marker up at 500 kilohertz higher or four megahertz, just for sake of discussion here. We're hovering right around nine dB difference between the higher part of the band and the lower part of the band. So going back to my ideal case of tuning the filter for 160 to 1815, losing the high portion of the band on 80 is the sacrifice that I'm making to make sure that I get that filter tuned in the way that I want it for 160. That wraps up this episode of QRP to QRO, video number five, how to tune the bandpass filters in an Allocraft K2 with the use of a tracking generator and a spectrum analyzer. These radios have been out for a long time and there are multiple methods on how to peak the filters. However, this method allows you to visualize the shape and better optimize that performance to how you use your radio. As always, if you like what I've posted, if you find it helpful in your own amateur radio endeavors, please hit the subscribe button under the bottom right of the screen. You can also follow me on Twitter at QRP to QRO. My name is Steve and my amateur radio call sign is KC8QVO. And remember, with enough coffee, anything is possible. Thanks for watching.